Bonjour tout le monde, c'est un grand plaisir d'être avec vous aujourd'hui de parler au sujet de l'extension de Cavendish. Je suis ici avec le conseiller Dieter Burko et on a travaillé depuis longtemps sur ce projet. In fact, since 1998, the city of Côte saint luc has been in favor of the extension of Cavendish as an indirect route. We came up with that idea and the route that is being presently discussed is the one that's been on the table since 1998 that takes us to Royal Mount to the 20, but not as a highway. Now it's going to the Bureau de Dios Public. Why, what is that and why is it going there? It's going there because the city of Montreal has an obligation since they were given the land to build on the Hippodrome site a project. And the obligation when they received that land for free from the province was to extend Cavendish and to start selling plots of land by 2023. So here we are moving forward. And Council Burko and I have met regularly with the four mayors from Saint Laurent, TMR, Cote de Neige, NDG, and myself discussing this project. In fact, since I was elected six years ago, it's been a priority. One of the things we achieved was we brought CP Rail to the table with the four mayors and we discussed whether it should be an overpass, an underpass or something else. Montreal wanted it to be an overpass, CP wanted it to be an underpass, and we came to a compromise, which is a beautiful trench, which Councillor Burko is going to explain and explain what the Bureau d'audience publique is all about. So I'm going to pass it over to Councillor Burko to tell you where we're at and where we can go from here. Merci, Monsieur le maire. Thank you very much. So, uh, je, je vais faire une présentation courte uh, sur uh, le sujet de la revue uh, par le Bureau d'audience publique, by the Bureau of Environmental Review. And in order to do that, I'm going to share my screen. Je vais partager mon écran pour vous montrer un peu ce que Côte Saint-Luc a fait uh, pour uh, communiquer ce projet à la population. So the Cavendish uh, extension project is now on our website. You can find it at CoteSaintLuc.org and um, you can see this is the Montreal proposal. You can see the ways in which you can make your representations and submit your opinion by April 15th. That's a hard deadline. Unfortunately, we didn't have much time. Uh, it's only 30 days, but this is, as I explained, and as the mayor is saying, this is phase one, phase one of the consultation process. And soon, uh, once the environmental impact studies are done and the um, all the assessments are done, then there's going to be a second phase where the Bureau de Dience Publique will invite the public to attend uh, public hearings. So I just want to give you a sort of overview of what the Cavendish extension uh, looks like, the proposal that is being presented. So la localisation des raccordements, you start at the Cavendish uh, and Wallenberg uh, intersection. Obviously, there's going to have to be an entrance somewhere around Collins because we need a slope to enter into the trench. And that slope as with the Cavendish uh, underpass at Fleet, uh, requires at least 100 meters of, um, you know, of entrance point. So at that entrance, that's the first point that needs to be mentioned, right in front of the uh, high-rise um, condo buildings, somewhere between Collins and Wallenberg, there will be an entrance to the extension. That extension will go the 400 meters to the Royal Mount Exchange, uh, au point où on est rendu à Royal Mount, on a le choix de tourner à droite sur Paris ou uh, éventuellement de rentrer dans le hippodrome. Ça, c'est uh, la voie verte ici. Et après, ou continuer soit sur Royal Mount pour uh, rejoindre des carrés or to go straight all the way up Cavendish uh, through um, the uh, CN Yards there right at the corner to go up Cavendish towards Ikea, the, the Metropolitan and uh, the, you know, Saint, uh, Saint Laurent and Dorval. So that's basically the proposed extension. Now, I just want to take you back a little further um, to, to show you exactly 
what is being proposed. This is what we call a mobility corridor, okay? It's more than just a road. It is a, uh, basically it's a proposal of 50 meters right of way, which encompasses, if you're looking north towards uh, Saint Laurent, and I'm starting on the right-hand side here, there would be a green band, then there would be a sidewalk, le trottoir, then there would be a piste cyclable, which is for bicycles, then another green band, and then one lane of vehicular traffic with a shoulder, which would accommodate the uh, emergency vehicles if in the event of emergency. Now, this is, uh, this is up for debate, obviously, and uh, two dedicated lanes in the middle, this is one scenario to have them in the middle, dedicated lanes for public transit. And we're talking about some kind of form of public transit that is more than just a bus. Now, clearly, um, when looking at this proposal, many residents, and we've already launched the consultation, many residents have told us that they feel that these lanes, uh, one lane per direction for vehicular traffic is not enough. And I would admit that um, actually one lane of traffic, in the uh, given the present traffic conditions, is most definitely not enough. We know that. But the City of Montreal is proposing a mobility corridor which is going to really attract and promote public transit in a way that we feel is appropriate or that they feel that is going to encourage residents to take public transit. And I just want to, before I uh, switch screens, I just want to scroll down a little bit and show you the what they call the, the, the proposals themselves. I'm going to switch to the English site for a minute. And if you go down all the way, you'll see that there's the uh, detailed avis de projet with maps and scenarios that you can review and where you can also submit your uh, comments. And some of the comments that we have uh, received so far deal with the uh, one lane, two lane uh, issue. But the other comments that we're definitely looking at and we want to hear your comments are what is going to be the design location and impact of the ramp and how this will affect the road network on both sides of Cavendish, the quality of life and maintaining access to areas surrounding the construction site during the construction period, the long-term sound and visual impacts for the residents located along Cavendish, and the impact on the residential neighborhoods and the quality of life near the entrance point leading to the extension. So there's two major issues here, and I'm just going to switch screens for one moment to share with you what we feel would be a more appropriate uh, form of public transit, uh, something that is really interesting and really, uh, a, you know, very creative. And that's something that came up with the McGill students that we hired uh, about two years ago to present what they call plugging into an all-electric transit network. They say that, you know, everything's car-centric and we need something that's more creative, more advanced. And so in order to enhance the connections with other modes of transit, including the REM and the Metro and people traveling to and from the different sectors, they are proposing, and we would definitely encourage, uh, a more sophisticated uh, way of public transit, which is better than a than a regular bus, something called an electric trackless tram, uh, which we see now uh, is in operation uh, in um, China, and also uh, have there have been renderings of a trackless tram in Miami Dade County, and so we're going to be asking the the BAP to order and to ask for these kinds of studies in order to make sure that they come up with, the city of Montreal comes up with new modes of transit and that we can really attract the ridership that we need in order to justify uh, the uh, this mobility corridor. Because you all understand that 
whether it's one lane or two, clearly there's going to be traffic and we need to find new ways through these uh, new modern uh, techniques to attract uh, riders to, to, the, um, to the other modes of transit, be them bicycle or walking or, or, or the um, electric tram. So in order to attract that ridership, uh, definitely the BAP needs to order the City of Montreal to do more studies. And this is what we're asking for. They need to do more studies and they need to do really a serious survey of our residents and they need to do origin destination studies, impact studies, all the rest of it. And that's the phase that we are at in order to validate which option would be ideal for this uh, road network. So that's basically it. Uh, we are going to present uh, our recommendations to the BAP. We'll be working with our engineering department, working with the engineering uh, of uh, Saint Laurent as well, and with the city of Montreal. I'm gonna be asking them to collaborate with us in order to further these uh, studies and impact assessments uh, in order to create the best possible, most optimum way of transit in this corridor for the residents on the one hand, living in the area and for the drivers and the passengers and the, and everyone who, who needs to get in and out of Cote St. Luke. It's a delicate balance. And this is, you know, the challenge that we have right now in Cote St. Luke to make it the best possible option. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baruku. So now it's up to the residents of Cote St. Luke to please participate and give their opinions. The more opinions that we have, the better it will be in terms of uh, influencing the BAP in making the right choices.